Well, guys, the Democrats have already wrapped up and the impeachment managers made their case. Ugh. It was just more or less a rehash, but we'll get into what they covered. Uh, they started at 10 o'clock local time here today, 11 central, 12 out on the coast, and then they wrapped up locally here at about 2, so a nice tidy 4 hours, eh, 3 and a half if you take out the half hour break that they had in the middle. And they did a lot of the exact same stuff that they've been doing for the past couple of days. If I'm to be completely honest, they just rehash the same stuff over and over again, saying that Trump said, we love you and go home to the protesters and didn't mention the fact that he actually just said, uh, go to the Capitol and be peaceful and patriotic with your expressions. No, they selectively edited a bunch of videos. Uh, they didn't invite anybody up to actually testify, but they had a lot of witness statements that they could not hold anybody under oath for so they could just go ahead and present whatever they want and uh yeah, it was just banging the same drum over and over and over and over again without any more substance they still didn't prove that trump incited anything like literally okay here's how you would prove incitement here is some incitement that donald trump has actually taken part in yes he has incited something before by saying if my arguments have convinced you make sure that you go down and you vote on november 3rd vote in person that's very important make sure you have your voices heard you go down there you vote in person you say hi to the election officials they're all very nice people i'm sure they are great people the best people we only have the best people and you cast your ballot in person that would be inciting he incited 74, 75 million people to come down and vote and do just that. But did he make that same kind of argument at the Capitol or rather at the Ellipse and incited that group to go down to the Capitol and bust in 20 minutes before he was done speaking? No, no. And the Democrats didn't prove any of that. But what they did say is that, um, if you can believe this, the president should be held to a higher standard. Okay, do you care to define that higher standard? Yes, the protections provided by the First Amendment, your right to free speech and peaceable assembly, doesn't cut it in this case. So the President of the United States does not have First Amendment protection, according to the impeachment managers. I would beg to differ, and I'm sure the lawyers and Trump's half, which are going to be speaking starting tomorrow, and then they take Saturday off for the Sabbath, I do believe, because let's be fair, a lot of those senators are lawyers, and therefore mostly are Jewish, and David Schoen, obviously, but with that said, yeah, and then they pick back up on Sunday for the rest of the Republicans' arguments, because they're going to be able to go for up to eight hours on Friday, and then up to eight hours on Sunday, and then there's probably going to be a QA and a four hour q a period on monday to wrap everything up and then they're going to vote potentially but that's how the rest of this is supposed to work out so there's going to be another day on friday day off on saturday come back sunday monday and then we'll get a vote sometime in the future but yeah just to wrap up what they covered today, a bunch more videos that were selectively edited, like there was one dude who was down there saying, the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. Rather inflammatory rhetoric. None of this was said by President Trump, by the way. But it was also selectively taken out of context, which a bunch of that shit was. Yeah, and the dude who said that immediately said this after his previous statement. I don't say that in a physical sense. I can already see where they have videos, <laughs> videos getting edited where it says, I want to murder Democrats. Griffin continues. No, I say that in a political sense because the Democrat agenda and policy is anti-American right now. Yeah, that's pretty different context when you put everything all together now, isn't it? But, you know, hey, uh, they pushed out their big lie and did 16 hours to do so. And they did so not well, but repeatedly. And one other thing I'll touch on. They were constantly bringing up the seven people who died at the Capitol that day. Now, I bet you're thinking, Don, uh, five people died that day. Well, and um, one, of those per or one of those people were shot in the neck by a Capitol Hill police officer. Two more died of medical conditions, one of a heart attack and one of stroke. Another one is apparent, has apparently died of being trampled to death, which is tragic, and we don't have any information to really back that up. And the other one was Officer Sicknick, who was apparently bludgeoned in the head with a fire extinguisher and then died due to his inflicted injuries. 
but that only makes five. Yeah, it's because they're counting in two other police officers who committed suicide days later. Now, that's tragic in and of itself, but how can you draw the correlation between the Capitol Hill riots, what Donald Trump said, and their suicides the next week? You can't. You can't. And you know what? We're going to double back to Sicknick because I briefly covered this and the information that we had at the time showed that, yes, he died of a stroke afterwards after being hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. But we can go ahead and remove that because we even got a CNN article up right here, which normally they're a disinformation campaign. And the fact that uh, the headline is new video helping investigators in search for suspect of the U.S. Capitol Police officer's death. Okay, uh, where did they bury the lead? One, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs in. I've got it highlighted because I do my research. Investigators have struggled for weeks to build a federal murder case in Sicknick's death as they poured over video and photographs to determine the moment when he suffered his fatal injuries. Investigators have determined that initial reports suggesting Sicknick was struck with a fire extinguisher aren't true. I don't know what else to tell you. He wasn't hit in the head. There was no signs of blunt force trauma. They are once again just trying to stand on corpses in order to moralize you into voting their way. It's fucking disgusting. And with that said, we know the impeachment managers that are there. Raskin is just cherry picking his sources. Oh, all the legal scholar, most of the legal scholars are on our side when it comes to this one. And even some of my students, but he won't mention that his teacher, Alan Dershowitz, think that this is an entire fucking sham. Or another guy who's on Dershowitz's level, Jonathan Turley, somebody who Joe and Goose, who we'll get back to in a second, cited out of context, obviously, uh, Jonathan Turley thinks that this is a complete and utter sham as well. But don't go ahead and uh, cite the two guys whose legal knowledge and legal history overwhelm the 144, 150 other uh, scholars that are on your side. No, just go ahead and silence the dissenting voices, which will be the theme of the next video. And we got to get um, the frame of mind of Nguse, because we already know that Swalwell is infected by, I don't know, CCP clap. Raskin voted and campaigned for the first impeachment vociferously. And several other of those dolts have just been making wild fucking claims. But we got to double check on Nagusi because he was vociferous and full-throated in his condem condemnation of oh, the, the tragic death of those police officers that were there that day. All 29 of them. And you know what? They all died because at the hands of Donald Trump, he was just inciting those people. Care to cite your sources? Fuck no. We don't have to do that. We got a really slickly produced video package from an unknown studio in Hollywood. But yeah, Nagusi is not necessarily a fan of the police. This was back when uh, Black Lives Matter was going strong, as you can see here. Yeah, June 10th. And it was all about figuring out if we're going to defund the police in Colorado, what we're going to do with the police, how we're going to reform everything. Cops are bastards, right? And he, of course, had a hot take on things because... One of the House Republicans, Ken Buck, said that, uh, yeah, don't blame the police. Instead, um, how about train them better? That'd be a great step. But instead, Colorado Democratic Representative Joe Nagusi asked about a lack of data on policing. There is no easily accessible way of how many police officers fired a taser in a year. Aha! Uh -huh. Or how many people have been injured while in police custody. As a result, it has hindered our understanding and our ability to hold law enforcement accountable in real time. The Boulder area Democrats said that this kind of information is critical to ensuring the use of force by the police is properly regulated. Why, by just looking at the blank numbers and not assessing the threat level that the police were under at the time? Or do you just want to completely shift all the blame on the police officers? Oh, you guys had the tasers. You knew what was going on. Yeah, but the suspect had a gun. And because you want to take away all of our funding, maybe not him specifically, but he's on that side. Democrats wanted to fund the police. I don't think I'm breaking any new ground here. But something else that was familiar during is, uh, I think he was up there two or three times giving different presentations saying that I'm going to give legal precedent and I'm going to tell you guys exactly what Trump did and I'm going to link it to the legal case. And he didn't do that either of the times that he stepped up there. But I can't blame him because he does have a history of lying or at least repeating a lie. I can't breathe. That's what George Floyd uttered after he was overdosing on fentanyl. But also by Eric Garner. Oh, that's a bad example to bring up. Who died after being put into a chokehold by a New York Police Department officer. As well as Elijah McClain, who died while in Aurora Police custody last summer. Verifiably false things that happened. But that was the entire flavor of 
you know, the four hours that uh, I watched. Ugh. You can go back and watch it. Uh, there's some stuff that they just beat you over the head with over and over and over again by saying that Trump will incite his followers by repeating his big lie. Trying to link them with Nazis. Because when you hate somebody so much, you can always just compare them to Hitler instead of actually providing evidence. But we keep coming back to this article here and... This gives me hope because Bruce Castor could not be worse than he was in his opening statements. So we'll see what he's all about tomorrow because it's going to be, I don't know who else is going to be on the team and maybe they'll illuminate us here. But if it's only going to be Castor and Schoen, uh, but he's definitely got to pick up the slack. A lawyer, rep a lawyer representing former President Donald Trump in an impeachment trial said the House Democrats presented no new information in the nearly eight-hour session on Wednesday. Yesterday, we said that it didn't dispute that the breach of the Capitol is a terrible thing and the mob violence is something that President Trump abhors. We didn't learn anything today that we didn't already know. It's a matter of fact. I wonder why we sat through eight hours of video that are under dispute. Exactly. Selectively edited and given by... The people who gave testimony in the different video clips were not under oath, was hearsay and conjecture. Uh, they also had several tweets from a feed that you can no longer readily access. Had doctored tweets as well. There was one lady whose tweets were up there, but it showed that she was a verified user of Twitter, had the blue check mark next to it. And then not long after the trial was over, she realized that one of her tweets was up there on, on exhibit. And she's like, yo dog. I know you want to use my tweet and all, but there was no verified check mark next to my name, nor has there ever been. Why would you have to do that? It just gives you a little insight into the Democrats' mind that uh, Twitter is quite possibly their only source of information and in how they direct policy. That, oh, if we don't use somebody who's verified, that means that our arguments will be no more credible than they already are. Yeah, but you're using tweets, which can be made by literally anybody who signs up with a valid email account. Tweets that can be made anywhere from in the bed first thing in the morning to when you're sitting on the can just scrolling your news feed. What, why do you have to make that more important? I, I guess that's just a little peek into their mind. The representatives serving as impeachment managers presented no new evidence supporting the charge of inciting insurrection. Though they did show video footage that had never been shown to public or before to the public, yes, a different angles of the same stuff we've seen over and over and over again. Caster said Trump's team isn't making adjustments to its approach based on what was presented Wednesday. Thank God, because that led to one of the worst and most shameful displays that a, a lawyer has ever done done in public what they do in their private time is just as shameful adding i don't know what the public has seen and i don't think the democrats revealed anything the public hasn't seen from a different angle yeah exactly i think it was all angles pretty much pretty much because i've been following this just as closely as anybody else has and there was nothing new that came to light that i didn't already know and that we haven't talked about here so he's just being honest and that's what i'm looking forward to tomorrow yeah, the rest of this just goes on. It's like, yeah, we're not going to change what we've already seen. As you can see, yeah, okay. Uh, d that was the only thing that they did. They just provide, this is a screenshot of one of the, oh, this is brand new evidence that hasn't been shown to the public before. Yeah, just closed circuit footage from inside the Capitol. They got the little watermark and the timestamp up there in the corner. And that was the only thing that was different. And, oh, this doesn't have sound because it's closed circuit footage. Uh, obviously. It, it just uh, very disgraceful. Like, most of Ted Lewis, he was another one of the impeachment managers that was there, and uh, th that dude is a stark, raving, mad lunatic, and somebody who has called for violence before in the past, and I won't hold that against him, because at least I'm consistent with my thinking that uh, incitement has to pass the Brandenburg test. As long as it does that, then it's incitement, but nothing Trump said, and nothing the rest of those Democrats have done qualifies as incitement, so this is just going to be more of your tax dollars at work, and just a short little idea of what you can expect tomorrow and Sunday from the Republican side of the aisle. Just a refutation that the Democrats didn't provide any evidence that directly links Trump to incitement. And if they have some spare time, which they probably will, just go ahead and refute those videos as just being selectively edited. That's what I'd personally like to see. I don't know if that's what they'll bring forth, but it's going to be a lot of constitutional arguments that there was nothing there and probably just refuting the mainstream media points. That's all I expect. Don't expect any voter fraud information to come out. Don't expect them to try to refute any of that. The team's already said that they're not interested in bringing that up. 
and there was a whole bunch of baiting by the Democrats to try and bring that up. And ju- and Bruce Castor set it up there because of what the impeachment managers brought up. We're not changing our strategy whatsoever. There's nothing that we've seen here that hasn't already been confirmed and hasn't already been seen by literally everybody. So I don't think they're going to be changing anything on the fly. Castor probably got a significant ass chewing after his very shameful display. With that said, guys, I think that's a fairly decent wrap up of what I seen today. Feel free to check it out on a three, four, five fucking warp speed because all of these guys talk like they're filling time and that they're trying to tug at your heartstrings. And oh, yes, I don't think anybody cried today. So that's a positive like how Swalwell's blood tests would come back. Anyways, guys, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.